during the 80s and kind of climaxing and ending by the mid-90s, there was something that we call the Satanic Panic. And essentially that was a, a hysteria created by fundamentalist Christianity. And it basically was saying that Satanists had infiltrated all cultures from the lowest level of local kids spraying graffiti onto overpasses up to the leaders of all the great nations on the earth paying obeisance to Lucifer and on a mid-level kidnapping women from white trash homes and breeding babies for sacrifice and creating child pornography. Now as soon as that was investigated by any kind of uh, reputable law enforcement they found that this was completely groundless. However during that time a kind of therapy uh, movement arose of Christian therapists who basically would brainwash people into thinking that they had suffered abuse at the hands of family members. Uh, this resulted uh, in all kinds of child abuse charges being leveled against people and a lot of mind control techniques uh, in the brainwashing sense being used by interrogators and law enforcement people but basically predicated on claims that were made by the Christian therapists. Interestingly enough at this point we've gotten to a period where the victims of this therapy have now realized that they were brainwashed and they've all been suing these Christian therapists and being granted very large sums of money in reparation. So it's well over. Satanists themselves believe in freedom of the mind, so we're not out to control the minds of our members. Essentially what we want to do is open them up to understanding themselves. So we don't use any kind of classic cult techniques because it's all about freedom. One can join the Church of Satan and one can simply say, I'm not interested in being a member and sign a little letter and they're gone. There's no attempt to convert or proselytize or control people in that kind of fashion. It's, it's very much up to one's individual choice whether to enter or not. As a Satanist, uh, I look at Christianity as a belief system, especially the evangelical Christians, for people who are empty in a sense inside. These are people who need something external to support themselves. In fact, if you look at most uh, born-again Christians, they're people who have gone through a great deal of personal crises. Most of them have been involved in drugs or have had emotional difficulties. They're not people who are self-sufficient. They need an external savior. And as a Satanist, I don't need a savior. I am my own savior. So they're a different kind of people. And Satanism recognizes that some people need this spiritual approach, while other people who we call Satanists need a carnal approach. We can coexist as long as they don't try to force us to believe as they do, and we will not force them to believe as we do. What do you think will happen to you when you die? Satanists don't believe in life after death. We essentially understand through science that our life is one that is a consciousness born of many elements in our physical existence. And once our body ceases to exist, those elements disperse, our consciousness ends. It's interesting to examine the ideas of ghosts and any kind of, some kind of leavings after death. But so far all that we seem to see are not conscious survival of death, but maybe some kind of residue of somebody's presence, but not a conscious survival. Well, essentially, the Church of Satan would like to see society move in a direction of accepting of what we call stratification, which is essentially allowing the idea that people are not equal to permeate society, that there are some people who can achieve more and some people who can achieve less. And we want that to be acknowledged rather than a forced egalitarianism being pushed on everyone, which decides that everyone should have an equal outcome, which is unnatural. We, we, we don't want to promote anything that's against nature. We also are interested in having a much more law and order kind of society. Uh, we call that promoting lex talionis, let the punishment fit in kind and degree the crime. We think that in most of Western society, we allow criminals to get away with far too much, we're far too lenient on people who would actually disrupt other people's lives, and we'd like to change that. Uh, we also promote the idea of uh, creating artificial human companions, which is something that would appease certain human uh, emotions. People seem to want to dominate someone, so you could actually purchase something that's a mannequin that's actually got some kind of animation that you can work out your difficulties on that rather than torturing the other people around you and disrupting their lives. And also it's a great avenue for fantasy. In a religious realm, the Church of Satan advocates taxation of all churches. The Church of Satan itself 
is not tax exempt and we believe all churches should have to survive on their own. They should be supported by their congregants and, and supporters and not have to have government support to continue what they are. So survival of the fittest. Finally, we would advocate the creation of total environments and essentially it's something that's being pioneered by Walt Disney. Uh, you create environments that deal with either historical elements, um, ancient Rome or medieval Europe or small town America or even the future, some kind of wonderful projection of what could be as a kind of mode of, of fantasy development and being able to immerse yourself in either history or future speculation. We think that that's a wide open industry that is going to grow as the, the days go by. The human animal is a creature that is in a very tenuous position right now. We have self-destructive strains in ourselves as well as evolutionary strains towards a future. We may destroy ourselves. We may not get past this cusp of unifying the world in a certain sense and mastering our technology in ourselves to then move out into the stars. We may end here. What the outcome is, is really up to the higher elements in human society. All of the creative individuals, the intelligent individuals, have to move beyond anything that's holding them down to galvanize a world-based culture that can put together all of the resources of the planet towards a far greater human destiny among the stars. The element that is most crucial to holding Christianity together is the concept of having an adversary, something that represents an evil that each Christian must fear. So they've created the idea of a devil out to grab their souls and bring them down to hell and torture them forever. But the reason for this is because the doctrines and practices of Christianity are essentially unnatural. They take man's natural impulses and make them into sins, make them into punishable offenses. So they have to have something greater than one's seeking of pleasure to chase you into obeying their doctrines. So the devil has played an excellent role for them. Essentially, we see in our current cultural trends the idea of corporate culture is to control the masses of people by giving them a pseudo freedom which is based on limited choices. The idea is you're an individual, you're free, but you need your kit to show that you're a free person. So buy one of these three sports utility vehicles or one of these six kind of athletic shoes or whatever kind of product they're trying to offer. Now Satanists are wise enough to seek out elements of the culture that are unusual or old or forgotten. We look for the past orthodoxies that have been forgotten. And as long as we can keep maintaining our cultural archaeology and be allowed to, to maintain these treasures from the past, as well as anything new that's created of interest, we really don't need to fear anything in the culture because as we develop into a world culture, the idea of embracing more diversity seems to be part of the flow. And as long as that is the direction of culture, we really don't have much to be afraid of. General satanic perspective on conspiracies is that they're mythological, that they're used essentially the way most people use the idea of a devil, to frighten people into obeying some kind of societal structure, to keep people in line, to keep them off balance from what their real problems are, so that they don't feel that they can concentrate on their own self-satisfaction, that they can worry about other things. It's cultural static, but it's mythological entirely.